Hi everyone, it's uh, Jim Pugiamsis. I'm excited to have a patio power here tonight at Chalker's Pub. My first speaker is going to be Steve Dolson. And one of the great things, uh, Steve, is how we met. Uh, I'm actually my camaraderie co working where I'm a, a host there, and Steve actually is there as well. So when we first met Steve that first few months, uh, we, were, we were discussing about social media. We were both in doing that. And uh, one of the things I talked about were these challenges that I came across that you can do on a daily basis. Yeah. One of the challenges was, was to deactivate your Facebook account. So I did it for six weeks. He's great. <laughs> wow. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it was an amazing experience between uh, Steve Dolson and another named Lyndon Johnson, who's also a camaraderie marketing guy. These guys were just unbelievable. Um, it was they were great. ruthless. Yeah, they were ruthless. So I, we have all on video the, that I did it. And what I learned about is this, is that social media is great, but are we so involved in it sometimes that we lose track of what we're doing in it? So uh, it was just so great to, to be part of that. And so I'm excited to have uh, Steve share a little bit about his journey and what he's done. So without further ado, Steve Wilson, thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. So, is everybody doing? Good. Is there someone joining the gym? You come in? Come on in. Come on over. What's going on? It's all about social media, right? Meeting people. Spread the love. Yeah. All right. So, my name is Steve Dolson. I am uh, I am the owner of two companies. So one is Two Social, and the other one is Luxury Magazine. And so Two Social is a social media and branding agency. I co-own it with my friend La Lauren Sheriffs, and Lauren Sheriffs uh, is a wonderful ad to the team. She actually has a background in, in copywriting and writing. It was a perfect fit because I'm a total nerd. And so when we got together, it was, it was a perfect kind of balance of yin and yang, I guess you could say. Um, and we were doing the same thing. So I was doing it in Hamilton, and she was doing it in Toronto. And when we were talking about like, joining, forces, joining forces, we kind of shared notes in a way where it's like, oh, what are you good at? What am I good at? And then we decided that there's totally a fit. There was like not a puzzle piece missing, but other, not a puzzle piece that was competing with another. So it was, a, it was a terrific situation. And so I started social media because there's a time when uh, an actual club added me on Facebook. And I thought that was a bit weird because I usually have friends on Facebook, not clubs. And so when I was like on Facebook and these guys were like, battering me with events and battering me with posts and stuff like that, I said, okay, why why are they doing this? Why is a high club just wanting to go every single night? And I noticed that they're utilizing this because nobody else does. So I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I might want to do this for myself. And so I totally went, when I was in university, I pitched a company and I said, you know what, social media next big thing, it's going to be great, it's going to make millions of dollars, you know, it's going to be excellent, you're going to have people screaming your name from Port Credit, Ontario. And so they said yes, they loved it, and uh, I got hired on for four months. And that was the longest thing I got uh, the call. So some things went down at this auto, it was a tire garage in Port Credit, and some things went down. And the head of marketing had to choose to make the position for the finance person. So my marketing boss actually became the finance person. So no one was doing marketing except for me, the guy who was doing it for two months. And I didn't have any marketing experience whatsoever. I went to school for automotive engineering. So at this time, I was doing a lot of marketing and uh, learning, e reading ebooks as fast as I possibly can. And I stumbled on social media because nobody was really using social media for credit. It seemed like it was like an homage town compared to what it is now. Um, so I was using social media to connect with people and all of a sudden uh, we had this big Buskerfest event that we were main sponsors of and people used to come up to us and say, hey, yeah, I follow you guys on Twitter. Like, we like, we were chatting a bit. I'm like, oh yeah. And then so suddenly people started becoming customers and we started making a good splash in the social media world. But as soon as my call up was done, they actually canceled all the social media for that company. So that was interesting. Um, and then when I was in Toronto, I got into the real estate market and I, st I started doing social media for condos and stuff like that, condo developers. Um, and uh, that was really fun. That was like my turning point to make me want to do this for a long, long time. 
because I just, I mean, somebody's like, oh, you get to talk to people all day? I'm like, yeah, and I love it. I absolutely love it. So uh, I would talk people into um, like coming by the sales center. I would talk to people, come by this. And we actually sold a condo using social media. So that was really cool. We sold the entire condo in uh, King Street East using social media. And so I got really into it, and I was still finishing my degree at this point, so I had to graduate first. And I didn't graduate until December of last year. So this is pretty, pretty recent. And I was doing client, I, I was working with clients and stuff like that um, while I was in school on my on my off time, days and my weekends and stuff like that. And but when I par I partnered up with my business partner Lauren in January. Um, we started taking risks, and that was the biggest thing for us. Is we, we, we were comfortable by ourselves, we were comfortable making money by ourselves, but then finding money is it's like a legal marriage. And so what we did is, the first thing we did was became a legal partnership, so she couldn't go anywhere, <laughs> because I wanted to wedlock her again. <laughs> and so, we like, and we know that we were in this in the long run as soon as we signed the paper, and when we got into camaraderie, uh, we didn't have a lot of clients at that point, and we could barely afford camaraderie. We like basically skinned by our teeth for it. And so we used that as fuel for the fire to challenge ourselves to say, listen, we're in this situation where we can barely, barely afford the roof over our head. Now it's time to like get into gear and work our butts off, basically, for the next 30 days. And then rent got easier and easier and easier and easier to pay. And so now, like we're looking at different options of how we can bring on like more risks and stuff like that. So we took on um, an employee. We took on a part-time employee, and now he's full-time. And that was another risk. And like paying him before was hard and really hard, but now it's easier and easier and easier because we noticed that we needed spillover time. We needed some spillover to help us, you know, challenge ourselves and push us further because. If we can't get better, we're not going anywhere. And we, I asked my mom, and she's like, uh, "You're working way too hard. You're working like way too many hours." And then I thought about it, and I said to myself, like, if I kept, if I stayed the way I was, say if a client just dropped off, maybe they, they had a family situation or another situation, and they dropped off completely, what would happen then? And what would happen if another client just decided to leave, and this another side decided to lower the retainer, and then all of a sudden the stagnant, like stagnant mindset, would actually begin negative mindset, and we wouldn't keep our wheels turning; we'd be spinning backwards. And so when I started to social, I also started Luxury Magazine. Luxury Magazine was an all online publication uh, geared towards Canadian luxury. And what's cool about that is I came from an engineering background, so I didn't write at all. I had no writing. Absolutely emphasized no writing. The only thing I wrote was basically my name on tests. That's about it. I rest was like numbers and fractions and lines and that's about it. So I wanted to improve my writing and I wanted to write about something that was really cool to me. So I, when I was growing up in Bolton, I basically went to Holt Renfrew when I was younger, and I saw a $5,000 t-shirt. The 5000 t-shirt was ridiculous. It had tigers and diamonds and everything in it. It's almost like it paid its own taxes. It was great. And so this, and I think it was like an Ed Hardy, no, Christian Dior t-shirt. And it was like $5,000, but then I'm like, somebody can afford this. Somebody can like easily, it might be $5 to somebody, and $5,000 to somebody else. So I got really interested in how people kind of get to the next class. So if they're lower class, how do they get to mid class? And how do they get to upper class? And I wanted to find out and have this kind of personal journey about how I could raise my own class. And my parents were middle class people and they never took risks, they never did anything, they played it safe. I'm living my life opposite of that. They love that. That's a different story. And um, so to kind of wrap this up, what I like to challenge myself. I like to put myself in a completely uncomfortable zone where I have to be a different person. Like I'm, I'm 25 years old and a lot of people have a problem with that. 
a lot of people have like, oh, you're immature or something like that. But I want to turn heads and I want to be uncom in uncomfortable zones all the time. And like, I was the most shyest kid in the world. And I actually did stand up comedy in front of eight people and in front of eight strangers. I didn't even tell my friends. So I just threw myself under the bus and I came out on the other side. So I'm constantly challenging myself and challenging other people to be better people and to do things that are not the status quo. And so Jim's going to talk about like later on that uh, I challenged him to a challenge and he faced it and he actually extended the challenge further because of the benefits that he saw. So if my tidbit of information to leave you with, uh, leave you all with uh, tonight would be the status quo might not be the best choice. The status quo might be the reason why you're so stagnant. If you challenge the status quo, you might find the biggest positive or you might find the biggest negatives. But heck, the journey is quite fun, isn't it? So that's my time.